and there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Right, please. First eight nerves we call cervical nerves. From C1, C1 up to the C8. Now we speak not about vertebrae, but about spinal nerves. Let's say, remember, please, there are only seven spinal vertebrae, but we have eight spinal nerves. Let's say, my friends, write and remember for yourself that the eighth one will be between C7 and T1. I don't uh, think that it's visible here. Ah, yeah, visible, look. Let's say 8-1, it's great visible here. Okay, between C7 and 8-1. And also, okay, my friends, write and remember, it is very important for neurologists. Right, from C1 up to the C7, by black color it is written here. From C1 up to the C7 root will be up the, the up to the level of the same vertebra, up to the level of the same vertebra. Look on the picture. For example, C1 located up to the C1 vertebra, C2 located up to the C2 vertebra. Let's say, once again, from C1 up to the C7 roots will be up to the level of the same vertebra. C8, I no. say you now, it is between it will be between C7 and T1. Starting, my friends, for thoracic vertebras, starting from thoracic vertebras, we will have a root which is located below the same vertebra. Let's say once again, this is very important. From C1 up to the C7, we will be up to the same vertebra. C8 will be between C7 and T1. And starting from T1 nerves will be below the same level of the vertebra. Let's say once again, seven, uh, eight, uh, five, uh, eight cervical. We have 12 pairs of thoracic nerves, which is start from the same place. Yeah? We have five lumbar, we have five sacral, and only one coccygeal nerve. Let's say once again, together it will be 31, once again. 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and only 1 coccygeal. Now, my friends, write the small topic, the plexuses of spinal nerves. The plexuses of spinal nerves. The plexuses of the spinal Formation of the spinal nerve, I think it's not necessary to give you, because all these questions we study together. You remember we have two roots, anterior root and posterior root. Posterior root it is sensory root, well, anterior root it is the water root. Ganglion sensory located in the place of the inter intervertebral aperture, in the same place of intervertebral aperture. Two roots fuse to each other and they form together the spinal nerve. Let's say guys, I think you remember it. About spinal nerve, look here please. The spinal nerve it is divided into three segments, right please, the root segment, which is located before the aperture. Second segment, it is the four primary branches, or primary branch segments. And finally, it is peripheral branch segment. That's a root segment, primary branch segments, and peripheral branch segments. Now right please, primary branch segments, primary branch segments. There are four primary branches. Four primary branches. First two you know very well. I say it for you, yeah? It is anterior and posterior primary branches. Uh, sorry, root segments. Root segments we know. I think it's not necessary yeah, about to general, tell about yeah, root segments. The primary branches segment, right please. We have four primary branches segments. Now one minute, look here, please. Anterior primary branch and posterior primary branch. What it means? Look at everybody here. This is our spinal nerve. You look that on the level approximately of sympathetic ganglia, it is divided into two final branches, dorsal or posterior, ventral or anterior. Function is shown the name. Both is mixed. Both is mixed. 
dorsal one innervated the posterior surface of our body, ventral one innervated the anterior surface of our body. Again, I say you, they contain plant motor and sensor nerves. These questions we study. This is anterior and posterior. Branch number three, right please. It is communicating branch. Communicating branch, which is connected spinal nerve with the sympathetic ganglia. Once again, communicating branch, which is connected spinal nerve with sympathetic ganglia. Now look on the picture, please. This is the communicating branch. That's a from spinal nerve, it is come to the sympathetic ganglion. And from sympathetic ganglion, it is uh, come to the back to the, uh, to the spinal nerve. The trunks, which is come to the sympathetic ganglion, we call white fibers. Because they have whitish, whitish color. Why, guys? They have high myelinization. That's why the trunks, which is come from spinal nerve, to the sympathetic ganglion, we call white branches because they have, in the cross section, they have white color. The branches which is come from sympathetic ganglion back to the spinal nerve, we call gray branches because they have gray color. They doesn't have good myelinization. That's why in the cross section, they, they grayish color. That's why remember, please, the white trunks. It is communicated branches which is come from spinal nerve to sympathetic ganglia. The gray trunks, it is the come back in branches which is from sympathetic ganglia, come back to our uh, spinal nerve. And fourth one, last branch, right please, we call the meningeal branch. Again, it is come back in branch. It is come by intervertebral aperture to the vertebral canal. And inside of the vertebral canal, it is innervated the manix of spinal cord. Let's say write and remember, please. Let's say this is our four branches. Now about spinal ganglions. Guys, write for you that spinal ganglions, we have only from the level of C8 up to the level of L2. Outside of these levels, we don't have sympathetic ganglions located from level of C8 up to the level of L2. Write next sentence and mark it. All sympathetic ganglions together form sympathetic trunks of our body, which is two, right and left. Once again. All sympathetic ganglions together forms the sympathetic trunks, truncus sympathicus, which is located outside of the spinal cord in the anterior lateral surface of the vertebras. Once again, outside of spinal cord, in the anterior lateral surface of the vertebra, we have two spinal trunks, right and left. Like I say you before, they start from the level of C8 and they continues up to the level of L2. This is the main sympathetic ganglions of our body. <coughs> Remember please, main sympathetic ganglions. They connect it with the brain. You remember inside of the intermediate medial nucleuses, we have the main sympathetic nucleus of spinal cord. That's why from sympathetic nucleus of the spinal cords, fibers come to the spinal ganglions. It will be pre-ganglionic fibers. Post-ganglionic fibers start from spinal ganglion, and inside of the nerve will reach the different organs which need to be innervated by spinal, by sympathetic nerves. Is it understandable? Let's say once again, we have nucleuses, sympathetic nucleuses, which is located in central nervous system. From the sympathetic nucleuses, preganglionic fibers will come to the sympathetic ganglion. From sympathetic ganglion, postganglionic fibers will go to the organs which must to be innervated inside of spinal nerve. Let's say, look at guys, we have the situation, hold your hands. His ganglion and spinal nerve. 
I give one branch, which is communicated branch, which is connect me with God. But he in its turn give his branch, which is connected to him. My branch will have the white color. We call it white uh, tracks. His branch will have the gray color. Let's say again, this will be pre-ganglionic fibers. This will be post-ganglionic fibers. And post-ganglionic fibers, thank you very much, again come to the spinal nerve. And from spinal nerve, it will go to the different structures which must be innervated. It will be gray. It will, it will be gray colored. But inside of the spinal cord, it will be invisible, yeah? Because it will be covered by the Schwann cells, which has the myelinization. Only in cross-section you can see, if you will make the cross-section of the nerve. Now let's come to the uh, plexuses. Now write, please. In our vertebra, there are four developed plexuses. First one, we call cervical plexus, plexus cervicalis. Right, please. It forms between C1, C4 spinal nerves, plexus cervicalis, C1, C4. In the brackets, open the brackets and write, please. The main function of plexus cervicalis, it is innervation of our neck, partly head, muscles and skin, neck, Partly head, I will give you after. Muscles and the skin. Plexus number two, plexus brachialis. Plexus brachialis. <coughs> right, please. Plexus brachialis, it forms from C1, from C1, till the T1. From C1 up to the T1. C1 up to the T1. Plexus lumbaris and plexus sacralis, which is formed by the same level spinal nerves, sometimes we include it connected to each other because we don't have exact border between them. And we describe sometimes in some literature like lumbosacral plexus together. Let's say not separately, but connectively inside of one plexus. Let's say right, please. In some literature, by the same level of the spinal nerves, lumbar and sacral. Sometimes we describe two separate plexuses, lumbar and sacral. Sometimes we include it to each other and describe one lumbar sacral plexus, which is made in addition of lumbar and sacral regions together. Let's say, if you will see in the literature different situations, don't be confused. This is the normal. That's it, guys. Once again, we understand that there are four big plexuses, cervical one, brachial one, lumbar one, and sacral one. Sometimes, guys, you ask what the main function of formation of the plexus. Remember, please, in our body, in the human body, the main function of formation of the plexus is, it is innervation, right, please, of extremities, extremities. That's why mainly our plexuses will innervate our extremities. Exception, it is cervical one. It is innervated not all extremity, but only shoulder, shoulder. But generally, evolutionally, the meaning of formation of these plexuses, it is innervation of extremities. Cervical and brachial will innervate the upper extremity. Lumbar and sacral will innervate the lower extremity. By the way, mainly in anterior surface of lower extremity will be branches of lumbar flex. In the posterior surface of lower extremity, mainly will be the branches of the sacral flex. That's a remember, please. That's a evolutionally meaning of formation of these plexuses, it is innervation of extremities of our body. So it's said because this one innervates neck and the parts of the head also? Yeah, the long muscles of the head also innervate. That's why I say cervical one innervated not only extremity, but also it is involved in the innervation of neck and head regions. Mm -hmm. Also it is innervated muscles of the shoulder. That's why it is somehow exception. Mm -hmm. All another plexuses mainly innervated our extremities.
Technical one also in the reading, but only practical. Is it understandable for you? That's why once again, let's make conclusion. 31 nerves, except thoracic part, all another parts mainly forms the plexuses. In the thoracic part, we don't have any plexus. In all another part, cervical part, lumbar part, sacral part, we have formation of the plexuses. Now write, please, small topic, the dorsal branches of the spinal nerves. And move on the picture. Look on the picture. Like I say you before, guys, the dorsal branches or posterior branches. Remember, dorsal we call posterior, ventral we call anterior. Dorsal branches, it's not so good developed like the ventral branches. Dorsal branches has worse. The, by the way, plexuses will be formed only by ventral branches, only by anterior branches. Posterior branches doesn't involve inside of the plexuses. Write and remember it. That's a formation inside of formation of the plexus. We will see only anterior or ventral branches. What about the sacrum? You already say it's a Same way, absolutely. Only ventral branches will be included, not the dorsal. It means the sac sacral plexura, you say. Between? Sacral. Sacral, you say. It's a Supply the posterior part. Yes, of course, but by ventral branches. By ventral, by ventral branches. Don't think that posterior surface will be supplied only by a dorsal branch. No, ventral branch also will supply because the sacrum generally located on the back. It doesn't matter, it's dorsal branch will be, or it's ventral branch will be, it will be in posterior surface. There are several exceptions. These exceptions I will tell you. For example, the biggest branch of sacral plexus, it is the biggest nerve of our body, which we call nervus ischiaticus. Nervus ischiaticus will give a lot of branches, which will come to anterior surface also. But mainly, I say, mainly, generally. Yeah? Mainly, generally, it's so. Now look on the picture, please. In the picture, you see the dorsal branches. This is all the dorsal branches. In this picture, guys, by, uh, if I don't mistake, by the uh, pink, this is pink color. Yeah, it's pink. By the pink color, guys, we have the areas which is uh, supplied by uh, uh, sensitive. By the gray colors, we have the areas which is supplied motor. That's a posterior branches, like I said to you before. They gives motor and sensory innervation. That is mixed nerves. You can see that which part they innervate in. Inferior parts of the neck, inferior parts of the shoulders, the trunks, up to the gluteal region approximately. That's it. If you, if you say mix, it will be have the sense and motor uh, Nothing more. No. Only sensory and motor. They doesn't contain any sympathetic and parasympathetic. They supply only skin and muscles. We don't have on the back the organs. That's why they doesn't reach to the organs. To the organs will go the branches which is formed from anterior branch, not from the posterior. That's why remember, please, posterior branches, generally, it is or motor branches or, or sensory branches. I mean only somato sensation, general sensation. They doesn't have special sensation. A few names I give you, not so much. Generally, four nerves I give you by the names, which you must remember in your control from the dorsal branches. First one, it is suboccipital one. Suboccipital one located just below the occipital part of the head, and mainly, my friends, it supplies the semispinal long muscles, you remember, yeah? Semispinal oh, muscles yeah. start from the head region and continues to the neck region. That's a suboccipital nerve has only one, it is motor nerve, and it is supplying the semi-spinal uh, uh, muscles. Mm -hmm. That's a remember, please. First one, it is nervus suboccipitalis. From the dorsal. I speak now only about yeah, dorsal part. branches. Yeah. I speak now only about dorsal. That's it. only four nerves you will remember from the dorsal. Second one you know very well. We study it in our head region, in the occipital part, and it comes to the parietal region also. It is nervus occipitalis major. 
nervus occipitalis major. What the function of it, guys? It is supply musculus uh, fronto occipitalis, you remember, which is formed uh, our gallia aponeurotica. We study it together, yeah. Here, yeah? And it has also, also the sensor branches, which is in related skin in this region. For the humanity, mainly, main function, it is the sensory innervation. Why? Because you remember, we lose function of front occipital muscle. Yeah. We can't move so uh, move the ears or head, uh, skin. Let's say it is, we can say, rudimentary motor and properly sensor. Rudimentary motor and properly sensor. Next one, guys, it is cluneus superior and cluneus medium. It is the nerves which is located in the sacral region. Both these nerves in gluteal region, pluneus in Greek, it means gluteus. That's like the region which I show, yeah? We call in Latin gluteal region. In Greek, we call pluneal region. Maya and minor? Huh? Maya and minor. No, we don't have Maya and minor. Just it is gluteal region. Here there are three nerves. Look, pluneus superior. Cluneus media and cluneus inferior. Cluneus superior, right please. Nervus cluneus superior. It is dorsal branch of lumbar nerves. Dorsal branch of lumbar nerves. Nervus cluneus media. It is dorsal branch of sacral nerves. Nervus cluneus inferior, guys, doesn't have any connection with dorsal branches. Right, please. It is branch of nervus cutaneus, nervus cutaneus, brachiposterior. Let's say from three skin nerves of gluteal region, superior and media, it is dorsal branches, one of the lumbar, second of the sacral. <laughs> Inferior one, it is branch of nervus cutaneus femoralis posterior in the brackets right twist, which is from sacral plexus. Nervus cutaneus femoralis posterior, it is from sacral plexus, and it gives nervus cutaneus inferior. Superior and medial one, it is dorsal branches. Inferior one, let's say that in the test can be these questions, right? Remember, please, let's say superior and media cluneus nerves, it is dorsal branches. Superior of lumbar nerves, media of sacral nerves. Inferior one doesn't have any connection to the dorsal branches. It is branch of nervus cutaneus femoralis posterior, which is from plexus sacralis. Okay. Idea is understandable for you. Great. If you understand it right, the next topic name, the cervical plexus. Before start to speak about cervical plexus, again for yourself, right, please, that inside of formation of the plexuses, we have involved only anterior branches. Posterior branches doesn't, I written it here for you especially, let's say, this is usual your mistakes. Remember, please, only anterior branches forms the plexuses. And plexus number one, right, please, the plexus cervicalis. Like I say you before, right, please, it, it is formed from the level of C1 up to the level of C4. It's not necessary to be draw. I will draw for you only plexus brachialis. Plexus cervicalis is simple. Right now, please, it gives three types of the nerves. Type number one, it is sensory nerves. Type number two, it is the motor nerves. And type number three, it is mixed nerves. Let's say from plexus cervicalis, we have three types. Again, open the brackets. Again, open the brackets. And right now in the brackets. Right in the brackets. Inside of this mixed nerve, inside of the mixed nerve, we have, inside of the mixed nerve, we have general sensation fibers and motor fibers. It do doesn't contain here any uh, special sensation, like the test, yeah, it doesn't have. That's a general sensation and, and motor. motor fibers. General sensation and the motor fibers. 
right please, topic number one, sensory branches of plexus cervicalis. The sensory branches of the plexus cervicalis. My friends, about all these nerves we speak before, then we study the muscles in previous lessons. That's a sensory nerves. Look here, please. I will show you in my head. First one, nervus occipitalis minor. Second one, nervus auricularis magnus. Third one, nervus transversus coli. Fourth, fifth, and sixth, we call supraclavicularis. Medialis, media, and intermedius. Intermedius one exactly come to the shoulder region. If you remember, I say that plexus cervicalis would innervate it head region, neck region, and the shoulder. Let's say right, please. Number one, nervus occipitalis minor. In the uh, brackets, you can write, it makes the sensory innervation of occipital region of our head. Sensory innervation of occipital region. Second one, nervus auricularis magnus. Nervus auricularis magnus. Right, please, just look here, please. I put my finger just behind of my ear. This is region of mastoid process. That's a skin here will be innervated and fall from nervus occipitalis. You remember, here we have an innervation from the vagus. Yeah, I say it. external ear and posterior skin. But also nervus, nervus auricularis magnus will work here. Point number three, right, please. Supraclavicular nerves. In the brackets, right, please. They divide it into three branches. Supraclavicular. Medialis, media, and lateralis. Medialis, media, and lateralis. In the brackets, you can write, please, the innervated skin from the region of jugular notch up to the region of deltoid muscle. That's why from the region of jugular notch till the region of the deltoid muscle skin, it means anterior surface of the skin, will be innervated by these nerves. Also write it, also the innervated skin in the thorax till the level of second rib. Let's say up to the level of second rib in the thoracic wall. They also will make the sensor. Now only we speak about sensor innervation. They will make sensory innervation of the skin till the level of second rib. And last nerve, it is nervus transversus coli, transverse cervical nerve. Now one minute attention, look here please. It is innervated skin of medial surface of the neck. Let's say in lateral surface of the neck. We have another nerve, which I will say you. In the, it is mainly the dorsal branches, yeah, which I showed before. In the medial surface, medial surface of right place. It is innervated skin of medial surface of neck below hyoid bone. That's an innervated skin of the medial surface of the neck below the level of hyoid bone. Now right please, the motor branch. Motor branch. Right please, there are only one developed motor branch, which you know we studied just two minutes before, we call it ansa cervicalis. Ansa cervicalis. Now look everybody in this picture. This green structure, which is visible in the picture, we call ansa cervicalis. Now how it forms, look here please. It has two roots. This is superior root, this is inferior root. Right please, ansa cervicalis has two developed roots, superior and inferior. Superior root, right please, come from nervus hypoglossus. Inferior root, generally right please, come from plexus cervicalis. Let's say once again, ansa cervicalis has two roots. Superior come from nervus hypoglossus, Inferior one come from from plexus cervicalis. In the brackets, right, please. Exactly, it is come from nervus transversus coli. That's why it is inside of nervus transversus coli, which I described you before. Yeah, that's why inside of nervus transversus coli, 
we have the motor fibers which doesn't work in the place of nervous transversus poly. From nervous transversus poly, it is goes to upwards and it is joined with nervous hypoglossus. Let's say, finally, nervous transversus poly, it is absolutely sensory nerve. It works. Out. Motor fibers goes to upwards and they form the cervicalis. Now right, please. Function. It is innervated all muscles which is located below hyoid bone, yeah, infrahyoid muscles. You remember we studied sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid, and ovohyoid muscles. Let's say four muscles will be innervated by him. Now last please, small topic right please, the mixed branch of cervical plexus. Mixed branch of cervical plexus. My friends, we call it mixed branch of cervical plexus, but it's not so much a proof. Right please, in real case, this is, for, by the way, nervus phrenicus, write the name of it. Nervus yeah. phrenicus, diaphragmatical nerve. Mm. Nervus phrenicus. But it's not so much truth that it's only from plexus cervicalis. <coughs> Look here, please, it's written, it forms from C3, C5. C3, C5, but we know that plexus cervicalis, C1, C4. Let's say, guys, mainly, it is started from plexus cervicalis, but also branches come from plexus brachialis, which is formed from C5 T1. up to T1. That's why we include, <laughs> we include this nerve inside of plexus cervicalis, but we understand that it is not completely true. Mm -hmm. We understand that it's partly joined the branches from plexus brachialis also. Now write, please. A nervus phrenicus, nervus phrenicus forms on the level of neck region. Forms on the level of neck region. And by apertura thoracis superior, superior aperture of the thorax, it is goes to the thoracic cavity. By apertura thoracis superior, it is goes to the thoracic cavity. Inside of the thorax, Inside of the thorax, it is located in the middle mediastinum. Middle mediastinum. By the way, right please. Right please. The left one. Left one. Pass mainly by direction of subclavial artery, left subclavial artery. It goes to the downwards. Right one pass strongly between subclavial vein and subclavial artery. You understand? Left one, left, one, one, the... left one started a little bit laterally and firstly passed by direction of subclavial artery, then goes to downwards. Mm -hmm. Right one has between vertical them. direction. It is exactly from up goes to down between subclavial wing, which is more superficial, and subclavial artery, which is deep. Yeah. That's I remember, please. Left one is little oblique, right one it is strongly vertical. Inside of the thorax, guys, right, please. Nervus phrenicus located in front, right, it's very important. It's not written in the text. It is located in front of lung roots. In front. For yourself, open the brackets and write, please. Vagus will be behind of lung roots. Phrenicus will be in front. And here, right place, in this level, it is gives the innervated branches to the pericardium. We call it pericardiac branches. Pericardiac branches. It is, in brackets, right place, sensory branches. And it gives the sensory branches partly to the abdomen. We call it pericardio-abdominal branches. My friends, it is very important phenomena. These pericardial abdominal branches mainly better develop for the right nerve, not from the left nerve. And they reach the liver, 
and they innervated the capsule of the liver, interoreception, interoreception. Let's say, guys, if there are inflammative process here, for example, cholecystite, what we do, one minute attention, for the patient, we know, yeah, on the neck, it is passed between two uh, legs of sternocleidomastoid muscle, yeah. you will read it in the text. Let's say, I turn the head in the opposite side, I find sternocleidomastoid muscle, and I press between medial and lateral head of SCM muscle. And the patient feel heart pain reaction.